Well, hello everyone and welcome to Momentum channel. My name is Mo and in this video, we're gonna be talking about three high quality uh, stock uh, or ETF that we plan to buy in the week ahead in the stock market. We're gonna be talking to you about why and that's the strategy that we are gonna take in terms of buying these uh, picks and what really uh, makes these as enticing options. Let's get into it. The first pick for us is no other than Manual Life Financial Corporation. It was last traded for the price of $26.74. And we currently have 11 shares of Manual Life in our account. It has a yield, a dividend yield of around 4.5%. And for us, these 11 shares that we have is up by close to 21%. The reason we intend to buy Manual Life Corporation is kind of a multiple fold. First and foremost, if you look at the price to earning ratio, it's only at 7.54, which is uh, quite uh, decent and low in a sense uh, when it comes to the financial uh, sectors. Many other renowned banks uh, that we look at, uh, such as Royal Bank of Canada, Toronto Dominion Bank, and many other uh, banks, uh, when it comes to their price to earning ratio, you're looking at a higher multiple. And the fact that here it's only at around seven and a half suggests that this stock is trading at a lower multiple. Um, and of course, it's a uh, kind of a profit earning business. If you're going to take a look at its last, uh, you know, earnings for investors outside of Canada. Yeah, it is uh, positive to as well to mention that not only uh, manual life is traded on Toronto Stock Exchange with ticker symbol MFC, it is also available on New York Stock Exchange with ticker symbol MFC. So uh, this really opens up the door for investors outside of Canada who are uh, interested in this stock. The manual life is going to be announcing its next earnings report for first quarter of 2022 uh, uh, on uh, May 11th. Uh, nonetheless, we are going to be taking a look at uh, its last earnings report for Q4 of 2021, which was released uh, in February of this year. Looking at that, a number of things I wanted to pinpoint for you. First and foremost, in that uh, quarter, and as a result of that, uh, in the entire year of 2021, Manual Life managed to report it's a record high net income of $7.1 billion. That was for the entire year of 2021. And uh, part of that is goes back to their core earnings from their core businesses of $6.5 billion. Uh, it's also worthwhile mentioning that uh, for them, for Manual Life, they are active in numerous uh, business uh, segments, uh, not only here in Canada, but also in Asia, Canada, and the US. And we're going to take a look at that and that breakdown by... Uh, different markets, how that kind of pans. If you look at their earnings here as in this table showcased uh, by based on the core earnings by different segments in Asia, Canada, and US, you are looking at the fourth quarter of 2021 in both here, as you note, pointing it out. You also have the comparison to that of the previous quarter in the third quarter of 2021, but also the fourth quarter of the year prior to that in 2020. Uh, and look at that for asia in terms of their core earnings and these are reported in million dollars in the fourth quarter of 2021 uh, they had 547 million dollars in earnings uh, which although is showing a little bit of decline compared to that of the fourth quarter of 2020 all in all when it comes to the entire year uh, for fiscal year of uh, two, 2021 it, it surpasses that of the fiscal year of 2020 uh, same story is here for Canada, you know, for the 2020, the year 2021, uh, they reported 1.1 or close to $1.2 billion in, uh, you know, earnings from their core earnings uh, compared to that of uh, only 1.174. Uh, so it's slightly more in that of 2021. As for the U.S. Uh, core earnings, though, their uh, earnings in the year 2021 uh, was slightly down. Um, you notice here uh, 1.936 uh, uh, billion dollars in 2021 compared to 1.995 billion dollars in 2020. You also are looking at the global wealth and asset management, uh, which uh, actually has a decent increase in 2021, showing 1.4 billion dollars compared to that of only 1.1 billion dollars in 2020. This exposure of manual life to multiple uh, business segments in Asia, Canada, and the US 
really provides a wonderful opportunity for them to continue to grow their business. They are uh, doing a number of acquisitions as well in the Asia market, US, uh, and so on, uh, which pro propels them to continue to increase their uh, revenue and income uh, for the years to come. Uh, that's one of the uh, key reasons why we want to continue to invest in Manulife and add to our existing shares of it. For investors in Canada through Wealth Simple Trade, you have the option to even buy shares of Manulife through fractional share buying, if that's something that interests you. Uh, if you are not in investing or trading with Wealth Simple Trade, it's a wonderful platform that allows investors in Canada to buy um, shares of reputable businesses and exchange traded funds at no cost. It's free uh, for purchases. Now, our second pick is another Canadian bank. This one is Toronto Dominion Bank, the ticker symbol TD. It is, again, available on New York Stock Exchange for investors outside of Canada who are interested to uh, get their hands on this high-quality bank. Looking at the past performance of Toronto Dominion Bank, the past one week, this stock was uh, down by about 2.3%. The past one month, the stock was almost stagnant at just up about 1%. The past three months, the stock was up by 2.57%. But if you look at the past one year, the stock is up close to 19%. The past five-year return for the stock is a decent 48% positive return. For us, we do have shares of uh, Toronto Dominion Bank in two of our accounts here. We have about half a share of uh, TD in our tax-free savings account which is uh, almost up by about half a percent. And we have 9.2 fractional shares of Toronto Dominion Bank in our account with uh, non-registered personal account. Here it is up by close to 35%. And if we look at the uh, details around uh, Toronto Dominion Bank, uh, as for TD, they have recently announced their quarter one of 2022 earnings, and we're going to take a look at it momentarily, uh, what it, you see here. A number of things that I wanted to uh, bring to your attention is, uh, let's take a look at the total revenue that they have reported. Total revenue reported by Toronto Dominion Bank, this is reported based on million dollars in Canadian dollars. They showed uh, at the end of January 31st, 2022, for that uh, three months ending on that quarter, uh, they had 11. 3 billion Canadian dollars in total revenue reported, which if you compare to that of the previous quarter, previous quarter in the year before, in January, ending in January 31st of 2021, uh, it shows a very decent increase, uh, whereby previously in the year prior to that, they reported 10.8 billion Canadian dollars. Similar story when it comes to the uh, net income, net income reported in the quarter ending January 31st, 2022 was $3.7 billion compared to that of $3.3 billion for the quarter ending in January 31st of 2021. There, uh, compared to the previous quarter, the quarter immediately prior to the last one they reported on, their uh, earning per share uh, went down slightly from $2.04 to that of $2.04 three cents for the basic earnings per share. Nonetheless, TD continues to stay a remarkable business um, to invest in. It's uh, one of the leading banks in the world. It is uh, the second largest bank in Canada in terms of assets under management, and it has businesses in the U.S. Um, that actively uh, is available there, and it gives them a great uh, opportunity to expand on their uh, earnings and revenue uh, from that uh, geographic uh, market. In fact, if you look at their U.S. retail net income uh, in the last quarter, they had $1.27 billion uh, in Canadian dollars, which shows an increase of 27% compared to their first quarter of the last year. What's more, their bank's investment in the Charles Schwab Corporation contributed $252 million in earnings, which is an increase of 21% compared with the first quarter of last year. Our third pick is an exchange traded funds. It is one that we've been uh, continuing to add to our positions and gives uh, investors, particularly those in Canada, a way to get exposure to high quality Canadian stocks. It is no other than VDY, FTSE Canadian High Dividend Yield Index ETF offered by Vanguard and ticker symbol VDY. It has been traded last for the price of 
cents. It has a management expense ratio of 0.22%, which suggests if you invested, say, $10,000 with VDY, you'd be paying a fee of only $22 in one year. It does pay its distributions on a monthly basis, which uh, is uh, quite uh, popular and uh, kind of desired in a sense for many investors who wanted to have a monthly uh, source of passive income. Currently, the 12 month yield is at about 3.4%. It has 1.76, of course, $1.77 billion in assets under management. If you look at uh, what VDY does, it provides to the extent possible uh, the performance uh, of a broad Canadian equity index that measures the investment return of common stocks of Canadian companies that are characterized by high dividend yield. It was incepted back in November of 2012. And the last time uh, its distribution income per share was at around 15 cents. Looking at the past performance for VDY, and let's take a look at this is by the end of March of 2022, uh, looking at the return based on the market price for year to date was at 10% plus return, one year return of 30% plus, three year annualized return of 17%, and five year annualized return of 11%. Uh, what's more, the annualized return since inception was at 11%, which is quite decent uh, for uh, an ETF that allows you to passively invest in the stock market for in high quality dividend paying Canadian stocks. Let us take a look at specifically what uh, stocks are covered as part of VDY. Here you're getting exposure to 39 high quality stocks, majority of which are considered to be large uh, businesses with close to 95%, about 2.3 or 2.4% exposure to medium size, 1% to medium large size, and 1% uh, to medium small size. And the remaining about 1% is exposure to small size businesses. All of these companies are Canadian as we talked about. And majority of the exposure here is to financials with 57%, followed by energy sector at 24.2 and telecommunications at 8.3%. If you look at the top holdings here, uh, we are looking at Royal Bank of Canada, Toronto Dominion Bank, which we talked about earlier on, and Bank of Nova Scotia. These are your top three, followed by Enbridge and Bank of Montreal. Here's the list of uh, the top uh, 10 for you located here. But if you are interested, you can take a look at uh, all the 39 holdings and export them in a file. For us, we do currently have 17 shares of VDY. It is down by about 1% at this time, but it's a more recent addition to our holdings. So we are not worried about that. Uh, we are patient and we want to see how this uh, continues to perform. Looking at the past one week return for VDY, you're looking at uh, this ETF being down by about 1.13%. The past one month, it was uh, almost stagnant at about 1% positive return. The past three months, it's going to be up by uh, close to 9.26%. Uh, for us, we do have 17 shares of VDY in our tax-free savings account, which is up, uh, which is actually down by about 1%. And we have one share of it in our RRSP, reg retire, Registered Retire Savings Plan, and it is also down by about 1%. Uh, we don't worry about that. We're uh, investing in this more of a, a building a reserve of passive income to the monthly dividend uh, distributions that are paid for VDY. Well, there you have it, folks. A quick look into three high-quality stocks or exchange-traded funds that we plan to buy in the week ahead in the stock market. And we talked about why that's our consideration. Let us know in the comment section down below whether you're invested in any of these picks. If you do, uh, let us know. And if you're not, let us know about what specific stocks or ETFs you're currently pursuing, adding your watch list, or perhaps planning to buy in the stock market in the week ahead. We would love to hear from you. As always, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to smash that like button and subscribe to our channel. Here on Moment in Finance, we post every week several videos about investing, whether it's investing in the stock market, including dividend stocks, growth stocks, or penny stocks, as well as talking about investing or trading cryptos, as well as discussing ways to reach financial freedom. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.